right, folks, we're back at it. Trying to make the uh, rotors fit the hub and going on and airing them up to a single thickness. Okay, so we got our rotor set up in our lathe and I am actually going to turn it down and remove all this and remove all this center and it's just going to take a lot of time but, you know, sometimes uh, things work like that. Okay, I'm back from the toe, but I've got to leave again. As you can see, that's where I'd gotten it to. So we'll take some more off in a little later. And you can see, I'm going to have to go below it to get the whole thing turned like I need it. And uh, I'm going to pick up the, hopefully, as long as I don't get another call and get run off somewhere else, I'm going to go pick up that, uh, I don't know what it's called. I guess it's some kind of a race car that a college built. Uh, that they had a Harley Davidson engine on and it's just got a lot of good parts that I need for this car and I'm just making a trade for it and I'm going to come out you know on the cheaper end uh, it's got a coil overs all the way around uh, disc brakes all the way around but it's running motorcycle rotors so they're a lot thinner than this and I'm sure they're steel not cast so you know we can't use the uh, calipers off of it and but there's a lot of good parts and stuff there and I'll show it to you here I'm going to run and uh, get the trade done and get it back this way. I'll take you with me. Okay folks, here's what I'm trading. Uh, a lot of y'all might have seen me pull this out of the woods, but I tried to sell it uh, quite a few times and uh, on the internet and didn't have any luck. A lot of people don't want to start with something that rough, even though it is something that's buildable, but the guy I'm trading to, I know for a fact will do something with it. He's uh, built a lot of stuff over the years. So uh, he claims he's already got a frame with an engine and he's going to go ahead and get it on there and get to work on it. Uh, he's got a 55 Chevrolet truck over there too. And he was actually the one I got a lot of the parts from for mine. But I'll show you the 55 when I'm over there. He's got a little utility bed and wrecker boom in the back of it. But And it was on a, it's on a Chevrolet frame. Uh, well, of course it's a Chevrolet frame, but it's like an 88, 89, something like that. But anyway, we'll get this strap down here real quick and we'll get it over to him. Well, this has got to be one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. It's a nice brake line. Nice coal over. Eh, just a few pieces of parts. Stern wheel, stern shaft. Alright, we'll get her off.
Spears. Yeah. Spears. Spears. They bring you some concrete? I will. Mexico City back there is going to be concrete heavy. I got all the chrome board. I got a ring to finish. And it's key ready. Hey, look at the Cadillac Cadillac. Like. <laughs> there you go. It'll, it'll be different when I get all the chrome on it. Can it do my? I'm putting a breather on the next, the right one. <laughs> You want to move that ratchet step? No, you do. So I got to make my dash. This right here I can't get. Oh, body line? I can't get the door to come out on us. I believe the door will. I'm going to make a custom dash. So you use the whole floor? I use half and half. Well, when yeah. I get through this, will be big well, box. that was mid-70s then, wasn't it? Yeah, 79. 79. That's it's on 79, Jesse. Real five automatic. See, when I get through this, will be boxed and I'll have more foot room. Yeah. Yours ain't got as much foot room. Yeah, it does, because I got mine's floorboards are rusted out. I can go all the way. <laughs> I can go all the way to the ground. Your floorboards good, ain't? Yeah, they ain't bad. I got the door work shut. Good. That's the main thing. I just been messing with it. I got a new cradle for it. What them ones? Okay. I don't remember seeing them doors. Huh? I don't remember seeing them doors over here. That was up yonder at the fire tower road, out at the road for a sign. The doors? Yeah. Boy called me on Sunday, told me where they was at, and I went and bought them. Huh. Yeah. See, that other door supposed to sit out like that. It's down the ground pretty good. Is it? Yeah, it's made, it's what they used with a mule, but somebody had it hooked to something with a cable, so they probably using it with a little bull. Damn, I don't something. know a damn. But it, it pulls a it must have been a, like a, a team of mules, maybe. Look. See how it's made? Oh, okay. It catches it. That's for big nails. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that would work. Brand it is. Never seen one before. You got it on it? Yeah, I can't read it, but... Uh, Over here. You can read this side. Oh, it's upside down, that's why. You can read this side. Come on, something. This side's out good. Okay. Well, this side's right side up. That side's upside down. All right. Manufacturer. I can't read it. Horlows C28 or G28. Huh. It's got a little nuts. Never seen one like that before. Wind don't blow it over. Oh, I bet not. <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining this was wood when it was new and they just made them. Yeah. I would imagine it's going to take a team of horses to pull a stump with that thing. They had a cable on it, but I think they're using one of the tractor or, or a little bulldozer and then walking behind it. Hmm. Oh, do it. We want to be hanging on to that thing when it's pulling too hard. <laughs> it might send you in the... I don't believe that cable going to break either. No, but it might send you away when it comes out of the ground. All right. Okay, folks, we're back with this thing. Uh, Johnny had added these that chrome windshield frame. And that loop right there on this thing so they wasn't on it it had a some kind of sheet metal over it and supposedly a Harley Davidson in, engine in it and it does have a let me see it does have a sticker iron thunder cycles so anyway uh, front coilovers Rear coilovers, coilovers there, and fully adjustable. Looks like they've got them adjusted up high, but uh, you know you can change your springs on them. And it's got a really nice set of brake lines, stainless brake lines that we may use, and the pan hard bar. We'll take it off and use it. And maybe I don't know about the rack. It's got an aftermarket rack on it. I'll have to do some checking on that. Steer's really easy on this anyway. Anyway, parts. And uh, we're gonna do something with it anyway. But uh, money-wise, I don't have anything in it. Uh, gas and time, that's it. That's all I had in the uh, the C-cab. And I, I traded for it. And what I traded for it, I had no money in. And 
you know, ended up trading for this one. So, you know, like I said, just the gas and time. But well, going to get them and, you know, just trading around. But, you know, the sea cab was sitting here, and like I said, I tried to sell it and have not had any bites whatsoever on it. And I know uh, Johnny Dale, that the one I traded to, uh, he will definitely do something with it. And we'll probably do a video to catch up on whatever he does with it because, uh, you know, he'll, uh, he'll get it set on something. But anyway, we'll figure out what we're going to do with this thing. But uh, definitely going to use the steering wheel, the quick release, the shaft. It's got a collapsible shaft and the heim joint to, to hold it and that'll give us some of our steering stuff and uh, without having to to buy it and steering wheels i don't know they're a little expensive nowadays but it's not a real small one but it's not a real big one so that's about perfect for it and uh there is some heim joints on the front end and stuff if i need some extras but uh all right let me get back at that brake uh rotor all right let's see if we can uh at least get fired up and maybe get this rotor done tonight. First, anybody that's run a lathe knows how long this kind of stuff really takes. It takes a long time. We're just now finally getting out of the, starting to get out of the interrupted cut. Now this is cast, so it's not going to be exactly perfect. Uh, so we've got more out of it here than what we do down here, which is, you know, not an issue because we're still perfectly straight on our face. Now when I get this done, I'll probably, uh, you know, when I find my calipers and everything, what thickness I need, I'll probably end up running. Uh, running this on the brake lathe anyway, we're going to get it down where we need it. And we'll take it all the way down until it's just smooth. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right, we're done. We lost a lot of weight. And uh, I almost can't believe how much weight we lost. Make a big difference. So. All right, we're going to get the, uh, we'll get it where it'll fit on the hub and knock some studs in it and slide it on the rear end here. Okay, we've got the uh, rotor opened up now it goes on we got it lined up now we're gonna get some studs knocked in it and we'll clean the studs up first with the wire wheel we'll get them knocked in it and then we'll uh, we'll get this hub back on there slide our rim on and we can get a better idea of our uh, offset okay better on there I've just got four studs in it because we're gonna be taking it back apart eventually to be able to uh, return our rotor and I may either get longer studs or I may surface maybe the inside of that rotor. Uh, that's probably what I'll do to bring these studs out a little bit more. The rotor's a, you know, thicker than the drum was. And I don't need to go very far whatsoever, but I want to bring these studs as far out as I can on the on the splines. You know, they got little splines that press in. So uh, anyway, clears good. This is coming off anyway, but you know it wouldn't have cleared it if it was double. And uh, yeah, it would have been farther in if it was double. But I think that's going to work out really well. And that's uh, that's where our this plate right here is where our bracket will bolt to. We can bolt it to the outside of it or whatever. And for our caliper, we'll have to make all that. But it's looking good. It is straight, but I can't seem to hold the camera straight. Not while I spin it. But anyway. We're going to get the wheel up on there and just look at some clearances, see what we got. Okay, we got the one wheel on that I have uh, turned the center down and pressed in. Now I've got to do all this same machine work for the other side. And uh, just got it sitting on there. Our gap in here, it looks like we've probably got an inch and a half in it. But I, now I haven't dial indicated anything in yet or nothing. It's just stuck down in there. And if you look... You can see their edges is not good at all. That's why we're going to dial indicate off the inside. These edges, they did not, you know, they're not perfect. So. But uh, it's wobbling, but it's not 
It's not terrible. Rotor's not wobbling. Uh, we got we got clearance in here. May not have quite enough. Might have to turn the rotor down just a little bit. Which wouldn't be an issue because the caliper I'm going to use is probably going to have smaller, narrower pads anyway. Uh, that's not an issue at all. So, but we can definitely clear it. We could actually probably just about clear it with the calipers I've got. I've got a set. But uh, they're aluminum and they're thin and they still just about clear it. But most calipers are pretty thin up there. So, and there's, you know, it don't kick back in. It's open all the way through here. So I think we could work with that. And uh, not bad. So next we'll probably dial indicate and, you know, tack from the inside. Hopefully I can get, ooh, that's going to be fun. May have to. Hmm. I just noticed that it's gonna be hard to tack from the inside when I can't get to it for a rotor. We may have to take it back apart and pull the rotor off and just put the studs in and uh, do it without the rotor to get the wheel right, which is fine. But anyway, that's what we're gonna do next time. We'll dial indicate the wheels in, weld them up, and get it all finished up. But, all right. Appreciate everybody watching, and uh, wish I'd have got more done. But uh, until next time, bye.